Come, let us sing unto our God, the rock of our salvation. Praise and thanks we bring before our songs of joy we sing you. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thank you for joining me. This is morning prayer for Thursday, February the 6th. It's the fourth week after the Epiphany, and the scripture for this service, Psalm 71, and John chapter 6, verse 60 to 71. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, in you, O God most high, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Alleluia. Psalm 71. Alleluia. In you, O God Most High, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. You are my strong castle where I seek refuge. You have given a commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hands of the wicked, from the hand of the unrighteous and the cruel. For you are my hope, O sovereign God. I have trusted in you since my youth. You have held me up since my birth. You took me out of my mother's womb. I shall always praise you. I am a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your honor all the day. Do not cast me off in my old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails, for my enemies speak against me, and they plot together to take my life. They say God has forgotten him. Pursue and seize him, for there is none to save him. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them be shamed and disgraced that are adversaries to my life. Let them be covered with reproach and scorn that seek my hurt. But I will always hope and I will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your mighty acts and your salvation all the day, though I do not know the number of them. I will begin with your strength. I will tell of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and I have declared your wondrous works. Now that I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me, until I have shown your strength to this generation and your power to everyone who is to come. Your righteousness reaches the heavens. You have done great things, O oh God, who is like you. You have shown me great troubles, but you shall revive me again and bring me up from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will praise you with the psaltery for your faithfulness, O oh my God. To you I sing with the harp, to you the Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you and my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue shall talk of your righteousness all the day long, for they are disgraced and brought to shame that seek my heart. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. In you, O God most high, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Alleluia. Here is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 60. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. 
for Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. And so Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, though one of the twelve, was going to betray Jesus. Here ends the lesson. Now let us pray for the church and for the world. For the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people. For Tom and Alan and Ray and Richard and Don, and for all of our church leaders and for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed for the mercy of God community, and for the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, for the poor, the hungry, and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. For the aged and the infirm, especially Marjorie and Ronald Francis, for Barack and Joe and John, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth, that God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let us pray. Comfort and revive us, dear God, that we may celebrate and sing your praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.